Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now in this episode of C++ Weekly, I am going to talk about getting vectorization of our code automatically from the compiler. Now I'm not going to dig into the very gory details of all of this, but I want to point out a couple of things that you may not be aware of and a couple of things that I tend to personally not think of when I am compiling my own code. So let's just do a very simple function that sums some integers. And of course, there's an algorithm that we can use for this, so we are, we are going to. And we have to include the requisite headers. And I guess technically it's worth pointing out that accumulate is not an algorithm, it is in the numeric header. Although maybe that means it's just an algorithm that's in the numeric header. But it's definitely not in the algorithm header. So I am compiling with dash 03 here with Clang. And it is doing something, some vectorization here. But it's doing it kind of at a simpler level, if you will. So what you need to do, if you want it to take advantage of the latest SSE instructions, and that's really what I'm trying to get at here, is tell it that you've got some sort of CPU that has SSE instructions. So I've just told it mark equals native. Now, I know that this is not the suggested way to do this because on Compiler Explorer you have no idea what kind of CPU this is actually compiling on. There are several different architectures that are in use by the back end of Compiler Explorer. So we just got some random CPU's native instruction set. But we can see that it is using these instructions that are extremely long and difficult to pronounce and don't really follow this kind of easy mnemonics that the assembly world originally had where things were just a few letters and it made perfect sense. These are things that, like I said, are very long. But it went to doing these vectorized instructions. So let's make a couple more compilers and we can compare the outputs. With the clone compiler tool here, I can come in and I can remove the native flag and we can see the difference here between the vector instructions and these. And then we can also come in and add a Visual Studio compiler. Latest version of Visual Studio that's available on here. Now, of course, Visual Studio's CL.exe has different command line options than Clang and GCC do. It's got its own pedigree, if you will. Clang was written intentionally to be command line compatible with GCC, but that relationship does not exist between GCC and Visual Studio. I'm going to break this one out so that we can see this. Now, there's definitely more going on on the Visual Studio compiler output. This is not really the fault of Visual Studio or of Compiler Explorer, it's just the nature of the thing here that dead code is not removed. So we care about this code right here, the thing at the top, and we can see that it's basically not doing any optimizations at all, even though we've got dash 02 here, uh, dash 03 that is. And that's because dash 03 is not a compiler option with Visual Studio. Now, forward slash capital O2 is the recommended way of saying I want all of the optimizations available on Visual Studio today. And we can see it's kind of doing something pretty similar to the dash 03 of Clang down here uh, with a little bit of short circuiting out on the summation. So how do we get the vectorization that we want with Visual Studio's compiler? And that is by adding the AVX switch. So at the moment, as far as I understand it, this is basically state of the art for Visual Studio. We say O2, we want all of the optimizations. AVX2 says use all of the latest CPU instructions. And now we can see also that Visual Studio is using these same vectorizer instructions. And it's using a different register set, but you know, 
I don't know enough about what it's doing right there. But I just wanted to make everyone aware that you need to tell the compiler about the architecture that you intend to run this code on if you want it to take advantage of the architecture that you're running the code on. So make sure that you're paying attention to this, know what your minimum deployment requirements are, and make sure that you're you know, doing the right thing. The, the Visual Studio options are pretty straightforward, but we can actually go and take a look at the full list of architectures supported by GCC and Clang. So with GCC and Clang, you can pass the architecture two different ways. You have this mTune option that says, I want to be tuned to a specific CPU architecture. Or you can use mArc, and you can say, I want this specific CPU architecture. And then you're basically telling it, I want something that's got SSE and AVX and all of the possible options. And to be fair, I probably misspoke when I said something about like which specific registers were being used. There's an absolutely huge range of things that are available here. And you can see even to the spe specificity here that this says, well, this particular CPU supports these operations like move BE and that kind of thing. And we can tell it which architecture we're using to get the most out of that particular CPU family that we plan to deploy to. So particularly if performance is critical to you, make sure that you are building the code specifically for the systems that you know that you're going to deploy to. So thanks for watching this episode, and I hope you learned something.